Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bible study. I'm R.K. Brown, and I'm glad to be with you, although some of you will not be glad to see me tonight. I say that sometimes when I bring a hard message, when I bring a message to bring the fight to the devil and his minions, and uh, that's what I intend to do tonight. I am astonished at the great lengths that people will go to have the right to murder children, unborn children, but nevertheless, children in every way. They are human beings 100% that are conceived in the womb. The Bible tells us clearly that conception as it is at birth, like, uh, you know, we get a clear idea like in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, which just, just came to my mind that uh, bef the Lord said to Jeremiah before I... Uh, before I put you in the womb, I called you to be a prophet, right? Before I put you in the womb, he said, you in the womb, or thee, in the King James, the, T-H-E-E. -E. Before I put thee, thee implies that there's a person in the womb. Before I put you, thee, whatever, in the womb, I chose you to be a prophet. That means it's a person in the womb at conception. And... So I said I'm astonished at the great lengths that people will go to murder the unborn. But I'm also hopeful because of the lengths that states like Texas will go to, to try to protect the unborn. And I know that they would go further, and they're trying to go as far as they can to try to protect the unborn. And praise God for that. I'm going to show you a video, and... Then I'm going to show you the future if we don't repent. Uh, but first I want to show you something here. Look at these Google searches. Let's see if I can get this right here. They're saying that Satanists may be the only hope to save abortion rights in Texas. What do you think about that? If you're fighting for abortion rights, you're fighting alongside Satanists. What do you think about that? You know, maybe I'll just sit here and have a cup of coffee and just let you think on that. So let me say it one more time. Well, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. So let me say it one more time, and I'm just going to sit back and take a sip of my coffee and just let you ponder on that for a minute. If you're fighting for the right to have an abortion, if you're a woman, or if you're fighting for the right for your woman to have an abortion or some woman that you knocked up to have an abortion, to kill a human life, to snuff out, to murder a human life, then you're fighting now alongside the Satanists. What do you think about that? Some of you don't care. Some of you don't give a rat's you-know-what. But I bet you some of you do. So let me take a sip of this here coffee and let you sit back and ponder that for a second before I continue. And I'm telling you, that's some pretty good McDonald's uh, coffee. That's just some of that Mickey D's coffee in the K-Cups. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's like an Italian blend, like Venice blend or something like that. Anyway, have you had time to think about it? Well, let's move on. Let's watch a video. Check this out. One group now challenging the law, the Satanic Temple. Yeah, the non-theistic religious and human rights group argues its members should be exempt from the abortion ban. Adam Bennett explains why. This isn't the first time this organization has fought back against abortion restrictions, including here in Texas. Their officials say they are ready to help members who want an abortion within the first 24 weeks of pregnancy fight this law. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. This weekend, the battle over Senate Bill 8 that played out in Houston is a savage assault on women's reproductive rights and across the state. Tremendous victory for Texas and for the country. Has now gone national. The Satanic Temple is based in Massachusetts, but has chapters across Texas. 
The group says its members are exempt from SB 8 under the Texas Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which bans government from infringing on religion. One of the seven beliefs on the Satanic Temple's website reads, quote, one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. Another says, quote, beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. The group's lawyers also sent a letter to the Food and Drug Administration last week, demanding members have access to abortion pills, which they say members use, quote, in a sacramental setting. The letter cites the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which was created to allow Native Americans access to peyote for religious rituals. The group's co-founder said in a statement, quote, we will not be intimidated into silence by an unjust law or an authoritarian state government. We intend to fight. Meanwhile, a pro-life group whose whistleblower site for SB8 was taken down over the weekend also vowed to keep fighting. Texas' right to life is undeterred and we're undaunted and we're going to continue to help pregnant women. As of this afternoon, that whistleblower website redirected back to the group's main page. We also reached out to the FDA for comment, but their press office is closed because of the federal holiday. We will update this story at KHU.com when we hear back. Back to you. Well, what do you think about that? So this satanic group in Michigan is helping in the fight in Texas against abortion. And did you did you catch the part where the report said that they use abortion pills as a sacrament? Like, do you know what a sacrament is? Like uh, the Lord's Supper, you know, in the in the Baptist churches and and the Protestant churches to some degree. Uh, you know, some Protestant churches are more like Catholic churches, but we take a little unleavened bread and a little bit of grape juice, not wine, because, you know, uh, wine comes from the cluster, right? So new new wine comes from the cluster, the Bible says, so we don't drink alcohol to represent Jesus' blood, which is clean. He became sin for us, but his blood was clean. And... Um, and his flesh was broken for us. So anyway, we do that in remembrance of Christ. It's a sacrament. Or baptism is a sacrament. It's, it's something we do. I, I do not believe that water baptism saves anybody. It's spirit baptism that saves. And I don't mean like the charismatics where, you know, they roll around on the ground and have some ecstatic experience. I don't believe that is what baptism in the Holy Ghost is. I believe that when you're baptized that you're sealed by God unto the day of redemption, which it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that you're sealed by that Holy Ghost. After you believed, after you believed Calvinist, after you believed, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. After you believed with your own faith. You Calvinist, and I used to be a Calvinist, and that's why I just drove that point. But back to my back to the point at hand. So the Satanists are trying to help in the fight to keep abortion rights in Texas. And some people are saying, like I showed you on, on the Google searches, there are lots of headlines that say the Satanists may be the only hope for abortion rights in Texas. Now, how, how do you feel about that? So I'm going to show you the future. But I'm going to show you God's law first. And then I'm going to show you a picture of the future of the United States of America and I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think there's any turning back from it. I'm reading a book right now called Complete Dismantling of the American Empire. I don't know what I was watching. I was watching some internet thing and I I was, uh, I just heard those words. I was just kind of looking on my phone or something. I just heard those words in the background and I didn't really think much about it. And then later I was looking on Audible. I listened to a lot of books on Audible and I was looking for something by Klaus Schwab and you know, who's the head of the World Economic Forum. I was, you know, I like to read their words, you know. And in my search, I see a book called Complete Destruction of the American Empire. And I'm thinking, I I heard those words on the internet somewhere as I was just sitting in my chair listening to the internet. So I I got the book and I believe that the guy is, for the most part, correct, that the American empire is being dismantled piece by piece. It's being purposefully done so 
It's being done from within for the most part. I mean, obviously, there are outside forces like Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, the Club of Rome. Um, the Council on Foreign Relations is actually inside. That's inside the United States. The Bilderberg Group, people like that, are trying to tear down our country piece by piece. Not to utterly destroy America, but to make America just another nation, as Barack Obama actually talked about from time to time, that he thought America was just another nation in the world. We've been the greatest nation on earth. We have the reason I can sit here and talk to you about this right now on the internet. Even though I'm on Facebook, I realize that Facebook is a is a private entity, and and as of now, they have the right to shut me down. But I can talk about this. I can go stand out in public and set up a PA system and get a license to preach out on the street like the Black Hebrew Israelites do, and call me a white devil and tell every, all white people that they're going to hell, well, I can go rent a PA and tell you this stuff that I'm talking about, or I can go stand in a church and freely tell you these things because we live in the greatest country on the face of the earth, and we still have freedom of speech. I know there are people trying to shut it down, but we still do have freedom of speech. So I'm going to show you God's law and... And then I'm going to show you the future. And I believe that there's no reprieve from it. You know, I know that the, the, the Bible says that, that the Lord said to Solomon, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and, and, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, or as Mike Pence said, and turn, <laughs> turn from their wicked ways, and then will I hear from heaven and come and heal their land. I'm sure I didn't say it right, but. You know, I think we're past that point because there's been too much innocent blood shed in this nation. And, and in order for God to cleanse a land of innocent blood, the people that shed the innocent blood have to be put to death. And that's just not ever going to happen. So I believe there's no reprieve from this. So I'm going to show you the future of America tonight by way of the past. Oh, I read another book on Audible. I listened to it. It's a few hours. I'll never get back. It was called A Brief History of the Future. So I'm going to show you a brief history of the future. At least there's a title that I could use. Even though, like I said, that's some few hours that I'll never get back having listened to that book. Here we go. Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or necromancer. Let me move this mouse. You can't see it, but I can. For all that do these things are abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. That's a tough verse. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. So back up here at the top. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. There shall not be found among you any that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. So check it out. In Leviticus 18.21, the Bible says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of of thy God. I am the Lord. I don't know if you've ever heard of that place, the Bohemian Grove, but um, there was a there is a place out in California called Bohemian Grove. And um, hold on, I'm going to do something here with my screen. There we go. And oh, I see. Okay. Y'all couldn't see what was happening, but something was happening with my screen. Um, and they have a giant owl like a 40-foot tall owl that they make mock sacrifice to. These politicians, like, you know, many politicians and wealthy people go to this place. It's a retreat out in the middle of the woods in Northern California in the Redwoods. And, and they, you know, have a mock 
sacrifice to Molech. Well, back in the days of Israel and Judah, after the split, after Solomon, after the son of Solomon, Rehoboam, lost ten tribes to the north, which was called Israel, and the descendants of David were the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin clave to the tribe of Judah. So there were two tribes in the south called Judah and ten tribes in the north. That's the ten lost tribes. And you're going to see why there were ten tribes. Well, you're going to see why there are ten lost tribes. That's not real important. Anyway, so Molech is who they sacrificed their children to in the fire. Molech is the devil. Molech is Baal. Molech is Belial. Molech is Beelzebub. Molech is Malcolm, Moloch, Milcom, any number of names for the same, basically the same God. And they sacrificed their children to them. The children of Israel at times were Satan worshipers. I know you Satan worshipers will love to hear that, but uh, we don't love to hear it so much. So before I move on, I just want to show you a little something. You know, I showed you that verse there in, uh, let's see, verse uh, 13 of Deuteronomy chapter 18, where it said, uh, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. This is a tough verse, but even Jesus in Matthew 5, 48 said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I don't know exactly what to do with that, but that's what the Bible says. And thank God for Jesus Christ, as the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 7, that, uh, you know, what I would do, I don't, and what I don't want to do is what I do. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God always for Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for our sins. And thank you, Lord, for raising, thank you, Father God, for raising him from the dead on the third day. Amen. 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 All right. Now. I'm going to show you the future. Now, was last night, I was listening to the Bible, or I was, I was going to listen to the Scorby Bible, which is a program on my phone that uh, it'll, you know, have Alexander Scorby read you the Bible, but it will follow along in print if you want to read the Bible that way. It's a great program. I, I highly recommend it. And um, Alexander Scorby, in my opinion, is the best Bible reader ever, for English anyway. And um, so I was listening to it, and I, and I wanted to listen to the text that I was going to that I was going to uh, teach on tonight. But I thought, well, let me start a chapter before that, so that you know, you know, as I'm you know got out of the shower and I'm shaving and all that kind of stuff, as I'm I'm doing all this stuff, it's going to go by pretty quick because Alexander Scorby can read a lot faster than I can. So this is going to go by pretty quick. So let me start at chapter 16. And the first thing I run into is this. And this is a king of Judah. This is not even a king of northern Israel, which we're mainly talking about tonight. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 1. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. So one of the descendants of David, probably more, if I were to go back and do a study on it, but at least we know that one of the descendants of David was a Satanist, was a Satan worshiper. He caused his son to pass through the fire, and that was unto Molech or Malcolm or Milcom or Baal or Beelzebub or Belial or whoever it was that they sacrificed their gods to, that they sacrificed their children to. Whatever god that was, it was Satan. You know, as as uh, I think the uh, the Apostle Paul says that. Uh, what the Gentiles sacrificed, they sacrificed to devils, to devils, to demons. So when they have a god, like a, you know some idol that they've made with their own hands, it represents a devil. So 
this king of Judah sacrificed his child in the fire. They burnt their children alive. Well, in abortion clinics, they, you know, they, I showed a video a couple of years ago where this abortion doctor who quit doing that said, you know, he used to put a certain type of tool up into a woman through the birth canal, reach up into her uterus and pull a baby apart, a living baby. And I've heard that the babies fight against that stuff as they're being pulled apart, that they're fighting against it. Of course they are because they're alive. They're human beings. Man, we are a wicked country. So let me show you the future of America. Here we go. 2 Kings 17, verse 1. I have talked about this before, but, you know, it's good to put you in remembrance of this. In the twelfth year of Ahab, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elith, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. Now, remember, there were two kingdoms. Judah to the south, which is where Jerusalem was. Jerusalem was the capital. And Israel to the north, which was Samaria, the capital. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant, and so gave presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no presents to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Verse 5, Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, which, remember, he served for nine years, so it was the last year of his reign, of course, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala, or Hala, Hala, however you want to say it, and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. So he took Samaria, the capital city, and he carried Israel off. Those are the ten lost tribes. They were carried away into various lands and replaced with other people. You'll see, I'm not going to be reading that tonight, but you can see that pretty clearly, actually very clearly, in 2 Kings chapter 17. But let's keep reading. This is an indictment against Israel, and this is an indictment against America or any other nation whose God is no longer the Lord. For it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right, against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced cities. I'm going to stop here for a second, because God did not want them to build high places to worship in. God only wanted to be worshipped in Jerusalem. So even though they were, in some cases, worshipping the Lord, they were not worshipping Him in the prescribed manner. Kind of like some people thinking that they're seeking after God, but not doing it through Jesus Christ or doing it through another Jesus, which is not the Jesus of the Bible, like the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons or even the Catholics. Well, the Catholics are doing it probably through the right Jesus, but they're doing it through works and not by faith. Verse 10. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burned incense in all the high places, as did the heathen, whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. Here we go. 
for they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. That's what I'm doing to you right now. I'm not a prophet in the, in the sense that I'm not a seer. But I am telling you that we need to turn as a nation from these things. Follow the example of Texas and Alabama and places like that and go further. Let's do away with all abortion. Let's do away with all abortion. You know, maybe with the possible exception of if the mother's life is truly, truly, truly in danger. But the only problem with that is there are a lot of doctors who would give that prognosis so that the woman could get an abortion. So really pretty much no abortion. I don't believe in abortion for rape. I know as terrible as rape is, and rape is a horrible thing. Obviously, anybody with a half a brain knows that rape is a terrible thing, and anybody with a soul, with a conscience, knows that rape is a terrible thing. But it's worse to kill a life after that. That life doesn't, that life, sh they have no right to murder for no reason. There's no reason to murder. There's no rightful reason to murder. I understand killing in self-defense. I understand killing, you know, like uh, putting to death evildoers by the state. I think that's biblical, but there's no right to murder. Thou shalt not kill means thou shalt not murder. Notwithstanding, verse 14, I believe is where I'm at. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. Let me make sure that I'm, yeah, okay, I'm in the right place. Okay, let me read again. Let me start again. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the that didn't, I, I lost my place, that did not believe in the Lord their God. Sorry, I got on the wrong line. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left off the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images like Molech, Moloch, Milcom, Malcolm, Baal, the devil, even two calves and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore, here's the future. Here's the future of America right here. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also, Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. I pray about America. I pray that God will have mercy on us. And it's possible that he could. I don't think so. An artist, a recording artist that I work for, and I won't, I won't say his name. I don't know if he'd want me to say his name, but a recording artist a couple of weekends ago when I was out on the road asked me, so I'm going to ask you a question that you can't answer. 
he said, but I'm going to ask you anyway, do you think God will give us another chance? And then he said, I think I know what your answer is. And I said, well, <clears throat> it may be that God will give us another chance, but I don't think so. But I do pray about it, even though I don't have great confidence in it because of um, just the, the innocent blood that has been shed and no way to cleanse the land of that innocent blood. You know, a lot of people that have shed that innocent blood have already died and gone to hell. But, they're, but they have to be put to death in order to cleanse the land of the blood. You see that in like Second Kings, I can't remember where it's at, talking about Manasseh. There was a king named Manasseh. And the Bible talks about that uh, the Lord wouldn't forgive the blood that he shed. Even though Manasseh himself was saved, the Lord wouldn't forgive the blood on the land. And he punished the land and the people that were on the land because of the innocent blood that was shed. I've taught on that before. I think I actually did a message called Manasseh. Uh, if, if, they, if this doesn't get taken down from Facebook or YouTube, I'm sorry, YouTube, then I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to link to that video on Facebook. YouTube. Golly. Anyway, um, the interesting thing about the abortion people is the people that want to take the life of an innocent human being, a full-blown, you know, 46-chromosome human being, are the same people that say you have to take the injection for the thing that's going on out there right now and think that you should be forced to do so. So they say that they can kill somebody else but you can't make a decision about your own life, but yet they say that they want to make a decision about their own lives. It's a, this, the, the hypocrisy is astonishing. But, you know, what do you expect for godless people, right? So, you know, there you go. Deal with it. If you're offended by that, deal with it. Because I'm talking to you. So, um, like I said at the beginning, I'm just astonished at the lengths that people will go to maintain the right to murder their children like join themselves to Satanists. And uh, did you notice in that video that I showed earlier that maybe I said this, maybe I didn't, that the Satanists were using abortion pills as a sacrament? I did say that. I did say that. So, um, man, go Texas. You know, I, I realize that there might be some trouble because I, I realize that in that law that even if you're a Lyft or an Uber driver and you take somebody to a uh, an abortion clinic unwittingly that you can be charged with a crime. And, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what to say about that. I know that Lyft and Uber has said that they'll pay for your defense if that's the case. Um, if, I, if I personally were a Lyft or Uber driver and I did that unwillingly, unwittingly, I'm pretty sure that the law would have mercy on you because they're not trying to put innocent people in jail. They're trying to put murderers. They're trying to stop murder. They're just trying to do everything they can to stop murder. I'm sure that not, I'm sure that really not anybody would be uh, convicted of, of that crime, but I would be willing to take the risk if I were a Lyft or Uber driver. That's how much I believe in what Texas has done. So I have showed you the future of America tonight. And um, I pray that the Lord will deliver us from it. But I don't have great confidence that he will. That's just the truth. I'm just being honest with you. You know, I don't have great confidence that he will. So that's it. Go Texas. Uh, if you're watching by Facebook and or YouTube, then do as the kids say and smash the like button. Let me see if I can put my finger on this button real quick. I can't. There we go. Watch me on Gab TV or just my Gab feed. I'll put this video up there. Also, BitChute and Rumble. I don't have things. I need to get, you know, the way these, these little guys pop up right here, I need to get, like, need to have a bunch of them on the screen. Just, uh, you know, BitChute, Rumble, Facebook, YouTube, Gab, TV. I need to have all that. But whatever. Um, I think that's my video. I think that's my lesson. I hate to say it, but I think I've showed you the future of America because of all the abortion and because of the fact that now 
the abortion people are wanting to get in bed with the Satanists. That's how much they want the right to murder their children. And let me just say this too. I realize that when a woman gets pregnant, I realize it's a tough situation. I'm not diminishing that at all. I realize it's a tough spot to get yourself into. But with the exception of rape, women are the gatekeepers of sex. You don't have to have sex outside of marriage. You don't have to. You do it because you want to, and the Bible is explicitly against it. It is sin. But if you get yourself in trouble, I understand the conundrum. Nevertheless, it's, you shouldn't murder a human being just so you can have convenience, just so you can continue to live your life and have more fun and have more pregnancies and more abortions. And God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. I think I've got nothing else to say, so I'll, I'll quit. Anyway, that's my video. God bless you. I'll see you next week, Lord willing. I'm R.K. Brown. This is Bible Study. Good night.